you had this 10-year partnership with, with Mayor Voinovich. A lot of people suggested both during and after that you were running the city. You want to talk about your relationship with, with yeah. Voinovich yeah. in general and that suggestion yeah. in particular? That was, that was, that was said quite a bit and it, it was very embarrassing to me and I remember one day I went over to see him about it and and particularly the, the, the guys in the media would say it and people would say it and I said man it, it embarrasses me and, and his response was don't worry about it you pass the legislation and that was his attitude about it pass the legislation let's make the city work and once I got beyond that I never thought about it anymore but it was always something that people said. It was little George, big George, and I was doing this. I wasn't doing that. But he was a he was a he was bigger than people thought he was. He was he was big in ideas, and he was a big man. He wasn't nothing small about him. Had he been a lesser man, he'd been upset about those kind of remarks being made. But I, you know, and he would come over to the office. He'd sit down and talk with Merce and I, and we talked about the city. And to him, it, the proof was in the pudding. And when we would, I think we became an all-American city about two or three years in a row. Those were the kind of things that he was concerned about. City emerged from default in the early 80s. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't trying to com I wasn't trying to compete with him and I was, I had a job to do, and, and uh, he had his job to do, and we, we made it work. We made it work. It was a great city. How did you, you, you were mayor, you were council president for about 16 years, 17 years, 16 years. Yeah. It has, it would be, it's almost conventional wisdom that you were the most powerful council president. Um, ever to hold that job. Talk about power a little bit and how you keep it. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't look at it that way. I, you know, it. I mean, I was aware. I think people confuse longevity with power. All right. Um, look, I came out of Memphis. I was. I was a poor kid. I, I washed dishes and and the cops used to run us at night and we get off the bus and. Prisons would be on there with the head broken, and and a group of black women teachers said, "Look, you gotta, you gotta. There's more in life than staying here in Memphis." And they they determined that because you were because you were segregated against, and because there was discrimination, we are not going to sit around here and tolerate you being a fool the rest of your life. We're going to prepare you that you can go out and be something. And that's that's what I that's what I was left with. So. I, so I, I, I came to Cleveland. i never forget the first day I walked down Cedar Avenue. I was walking with my brother, and I saw an East Ohio gas truck, and they were green at that time. And down in the hole, there were some men digging. And I looked down, and there were white men, okay? There were white men with shovels. I come out of the South. White men didn't have shovels. Black men had shovels. So I said to myself, this is where I belong. I don't have to, I don't have to dig. So you take those experiences and, and, you, and you go to school and you say, okay. And I, 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 I became a school teacher and I became a social worker and I became a lawyer. And then I, was, then I was fortunate enough to convince people that I can serve diligently. I can serve. And I was telling somebody the other day that when I got elected, to office, I always wanted to do the right thing. Didn't always, didn't know. I always wanted to do the right thing. And, I, and, I, and I, when I got elected, I vowed that I would not steal in office. Got indicted twice. Got indicted twice. Both times went nowhere. I didn't steal anything. Now, but it was, the, it was, it was the personality. It, it it was the it was the show. My brother said you're in show business, but I didn't view it that. It was the personality. It was it was the persona. 
But if you look back and you ask me, did I, I, I sat with my daughter one day and I said, you know, maybe I, maybe I, maybe I didn't do it right. She said, you did it right. You don't have any reason to apologize. I, was, I wasn't Mike White. I wasn't Charlie Carr. I wasn't Jimmy Bell. I was George Ford. Managing a body of 33 and that later was 21 required, I mean, you had to play tough politics. But you couldn't have, I couldn't have stayed there as long as I did if I wasn't doing things right. I, I understood. I, I was, first went to City Hall. Black folks, we never, we never got streets fixed and all those kind of things. But we always had to pass the bond issues. We always had to pass the levies. The White Council wouldn't do that. So fine, if we're gonna pass the levy, we're gonna get our share of things that must be done. You're gonna fix our streets. You're gonna, we're gonna have uh, recreation centers. But I also know that on the west side, Rakakas and those guys had to have those things. So we sh they didn't elect me because they liked me. They elected me because it was a fair game. They had their share. They got their streets paid. They got their recreation center. They got their mother purpose center. So it was a balance. And I understood that. I understood how to, how to make it work. I understood how to talk to people. You had a few instances where your temper got the best of you, got a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your, your language got the best of you in public at times. The one thing I would have changed, the language. The language? One thing I would have changed, yeah. Because of your daughters? Not because it was, you know, it, 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 you were, you know it, no, I would, I would have changed it. Okay. It didn't add anything to the, okay. They're 16 years, Voinovich decides he's leaving. Um, a lot of your friends and supporters urge you to run for mayor. Um, you were extremely reluctant. I believe, if I recall, your wife was against it. Your daughters were more more supportive, um, so you decided somewhat reluctantly to do it. We know how it worked out. Um, you regret it. I had a the Peter Hart came in and did a poll. Okay, <laughs> Peter did a poll, and the poll showed I was the most recognizable man in Ohio, the most recognizable person in Ohio. But it also showed I was the most disliked person. <laughs> I was the most disliked person <laughs> in Ohio. <laughs> and that, sh that should have told me right then and there. All right. Had to do it again, no, I wouldn't do it. Conventional wisdom during the, the, the campaign, the primary election, was that you were going to end up running in the general, probably against Benny Bonanno, maybe against Hagan, but yeah. more likely uh, you and Benny, and maybe you would have had a chance. Absolutely. Then. And uh, the night of the primary, I knew I could not win. When Mike White yeah. snuck into second place. At the night of the primary, I knew you I could not win. You knew he was the next mayor. Absolutely. I, I, I knew politics. I knew I could not could not win. So I had a month, just a whatever, a month or two months, and I had to go through the motions. Yeah, but I knew when the votes came in, I could not win. He was young, aggressive, good candidate. And I knew that he would take the white vote. And he got a, a small share of the black vote. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> you, he was a valuable ally to you for a period in the 1980s. No question about it. No question about that. Uh, and I liked him. He was a fine fellow. But Mike has his own personality traits. How would you like to be remembered? That's you know that's that's a that's a, that's a good question. I I, I am <clears throat> I am amazed. I thought that when I left City Hall that that in six months I could go live just a normal life. That people will. Let's you know, see me say, hey, how you doing? That I had been at City Hall. I'm amazed that <clears throat> till this day, I walk down the street and people stop and talk to me. And uh, this is both black and white about things that <clears throat> that happen. Some are imaginary, but but it, I really am amazed about that. But I, I think that 
if you look at the whole body of work and uh, <clears throat> look at it, I think they said that I did a pretty fair job. In your, when you left public life, you took on the NAACP job, which you held for another <coughs> 20 years, despite the opposition initially, I believe, from the, from the, from the new mayor. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you're also glad you did? I, I never had a problem with, I always thought that I could could make sure that I could treat both black people and white people fair at the same time. That was never a complication for me. I, my, I'd, I'd been elected by black people and I'd served them, but I also knew that we had not always gotten a fair shot. But I also knew that, that I could serve the general city, okay? and also make sure that black people got a fair share. Now, I, that's, I want to, re, I, I, yes, I want to be, remember, I want to be remembered black, black people that I made sure that they participated in the system. That's important to me. That, that's important to me. Without shortchanging white people. It just didn't happen. 